wonderful. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Music and Trivia. Thank you for joining us today. I think you'll enjoy and have fun with today's program. We will be recording today's program and we'll make it available on our YouTube channel in a day or so. If you haven't checked it out yet, please visit our website and check out our new page for older adults. You will find links to book collections in our system, programs of interest to older adults, resources and links to helpful agency websites. And additionally, each month we will review a book we think may be may be of interest. Also, our adult summer reading program is underway. You can stop in at any of our libraries to sign in and pick up a reading sheet, or you can sign up online through our website and click on the book by book summer adult summer reading link on our banner. Also, when you sign up, you will receive a coupon for a free book at one of the friends book carts located in every library. And now I would like to introduce Ben Pernick. Ben is a board certified music therapist and graduate of the Berklee College of Music. He has a repertoire of over 600 songs on guitar and saxophone in all musical genres and eight languages. So go ahead, Ben. All right, thank you for the wonderful introduction. And uh... I'll get started with this one, Getting to Know You, one of my favorites from The King and I. Of course, without the chorus of children, they're, they're downstairs sleeping, so. <laughs> getting to know you, getting to know all about you, getting to like you, getting to hold you like me. Nicely, you are precisely my cup of tea. Getting to know you, having things free and easy. Now that I'm with you, knowing just what to say. Haven't you noticed? Suddenly I'm bright and breezy. Because of all the beautiful and new things I'm learning about you day by day. All right, so I'm so glad to be here with all of you. And I had a quick question for you. And you can answer, you can just like call it out or answer in the chat, uh, whatever works best for you. Uh, what because I know now things are finally starting to like really open up, uh, whether it's movies, the library, shows. What is like the thing that you missed the most in the past year? Especially if it's, of course, me being a musician. I better if it's music related, but if it, you're not, I'm guessing that's part of why you're here. But uh, the thing that you missed most involving music that now you're you're going to be going to see soon. Live concerts, yes. Anyone in particular? Yeah. Who say say uh, if you have like a favorite, the one the one concert that you want to see? Mm. Oh, at the Riverside. That sounds great. Yeah, it's it's been the same for me. I haven't been to a movie theater e either. Yeah, after a while, you get tired of uh, let oh Summerfest, yes. Now, now tell me uh, who's who's like an artist or a group that you want to see while you're there. Because, yeah, and feel free to unmute yourself, turn off, uh, turn on the camera. Don't be shy. Ooh, make music day. That's great. You're playing a concert. Well, well that is be your own musician. Even better, Joan I've never, Jett. I've never heard of um, Make Music Day. I'll admit I haven't either, but uh, make for... music day. make music day is on summer solstice, and now oh. it's going to be on winter solstice too. I think so. If you have, let's say, a saxophone, you just go out on your front porch and play. 
cool. if you want to, but in my case, I'm playing with a community band. Oh, that's great. <laughs> I'll, I'll make sure to, you know, give, give my neighbors candy if I go do that with my saxophone. <laughs> it's, it tends to be a loud instrument, but it's, it's fun. So uh, I also think one thing that's now that tra everyone wants to be traveling. I know I just flying here to Milwaukee. Ooh, a street, a summer solstice concert, that we banjo three. Uh, but, but now it's a great time for travel. Everyone's, uh, or a lot of people at least are going to do it. And it's, uh, I know it wasn't easy to get tickets even here to Milwaukee, but I, I think it, now, especially now that it's summer, it's a great time for a road trip. You know, and I think being in one place for so long, everyone's kind of got the itchy feet, want to go explore somewhere. So we can, take a, a little musical road trip today. And uh, I think we'll start with my hometown, some New York, New York. Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. Oh, welcome back from Mexico. I wanna be a part of it. New York, New York. Those vagabond shoes are longing to stray right through the very heart of it New York, New York I want to wake up in the city that never sleeps to find I'm king of the hill top of the heat those little town blues are melting away I'll make a brand new start of it in old New York if I could make it there I'd make it anywhere it's up to you New York New York I would say if you weren't in front of your computers right now, you could do the high kicks like the Rockettes do at the Radio City Music Hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's actually funny um, that that, of course, a lot of people don't realize how late that song came out. Do any of you know? And if you do, it, actually even better, if you don't take a guess when that song came out. 1960s. It was actually 1977, oh. but so many people think it was like 50s. I've even heard people say like the 40s because every it became just like so ubiquitous that that everyone knows it. But yeah, it really came out late, but it just sort of like once it came out, everyone knew it. You go, OK, yeah, if you can do high kicks in front of the computer, that's even better if you have a standing desk, especially. Um, but the, the funny thing is that sort of became the song of New York, but uh, before that, there was another song called New York, New York. It wasn't quite as popular, but it also featured Frank Sinatra. And uh, some of you, if you had seen the uh, the old movies with Frank Sinatra, you might you might have recognized that one. It's a, kind of more of a ditty than a real song. But yeah, from On the Town, the New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. The Bronx is up and the battery's down. The people ride in a hole in the ground. New York, New York, it's a wonderful town. Uh, which may, that song makes sense to New Yorkers. It kind of sounds like a, you know, the, when people say the battery's down, it's like, what, the battery ran out of power? But of course, that's Battery Park. And, uh, but before that, there was even another song that was like the official New York song, which is very old. That, and that was, does anyone know what, what was the official song of New York before it was New York, New York? I mean, this one was like Tin Pan Alley, 1920s, but it was actually one called Sidewalks of New York, which most people don't recognize when they hear that, but some people remember, know the beginning that starts East side, West side, all around the town. And, uh, there's the rest of it too, which is, it's a nice song, but it's, it's, you know, when you hear it, you, you, you know, it's a kind of like old fashioned song. So I think it was good that New York came in to uh, New York, New York came in to replace it. But I don't know if 
I bet a lot of people are going to be going to New York. I don't know. Have any of you traveled to New York City before? Nobody? Well, if anybody has, let me know some of the things that you came to see. Because there's actually like, I never even like, I grew up outside of the city. And oh, you've been there, Peggy. That's great. Um, well, everyone knows. Up, sorry, what was that? In a really small town in Wisconsin. And Tom Wopat was from the same town as mm -hmm. me. So I was walking down a street and I saw a poster for Guys and Dolls and Tom Wopat was in it. And I was like, oh, I got to go see my hometown boy. Got to see him backstage. That's fantastic. And do, does anyone know? Um, well, of course, this is a lot of people go to New York. Oh, well, if you love art and architecture, there's a lot of great museums there. I actually, as part of my uh, job, I get to go on trips to the museums a lot, uh, which, which is pretty great. There is uh, some re one of them that I just went to was the uh, Frank, Frank Lloyd Wright. It's one of his most famous works. Anyone know the name of that? Very, uh, mod it's a modern art museum that begins with a G. Okay. The Guggenheim, yeah. And probably one of the other, the big, one of the biggest art museums in New York. It has a longer name that's often shortened to, which, to the and same name as one of the New York baseball teams. The Met? Yeah, the Met, exactly. <laughs> and uh, then another one that's, uh, has a more is a little more modern as a the MoMA yes ooh the tenement museum i that's one i actually have not been to yet but it's pretty great one that i have been to though does anyone know the name of they have a few of these actually new york isn't the only one it's a wax museum with a very lifelike uh, figures of all different celebrities from across the ages mm. Madame Tussauds. Yeah, Madame Tussauds. It's all, always a fun time. Great, great for pictures. Um, well, speaking of Museum of the Barrio, no, I haven't been to that one. So speaking of uh, France, figured, well, I know they, they mentioned that I do some songs in a few languages, and this song was actually featured in uh, one of my favorite recent movies, a star, the recent rendition of A Star is Born. Uh, so let's take a little trip to France. This one is La Vie en Rosa. Quand il m'a brought dans ce bras, il m'a parlé tout bas, je vois la vie en rose. Il m'a dit les mots des mots, les mots les tous les jours. Et ça me fait quelque chose Il est entre dans mon cœur Pour ne pas te jouer Je ne connais la cause C'est lui pour moi, moi pour lui dans la vie Il me l'a dit la journée pour la vie Je l'aperçois, alors je sais moi, mon cœur qui bat. Yes, I saw someone in the comments mentioned. Yes, Edith Piaf, her, definitely her most famous song. Of course, she had many other great ones. Uh, now, I have not been to France before, but uh, has any, anyone here been, been to France? Ooh. Oh, that's great. What what were your favorite things that you saw in France? I know my mom actually got my sister um that I'm staying a couple of times. Great. Unfortunately, one of the great attractions when my mom went to go see there just a month earlier, it was uh let's just say not the same. Which attraction was that? that has been around for hundreds of years. The, uh, the Notre Dame, yeah. Hopefully, I, I have faith that they'll, you know, at least get it somewhat better, but also uh, the Louvre where you can 
join a big crowd to see the uh, the Mona Lisa. And most people say, I don't think I've heard anyone who's been to the Louvre say that the Mona Lisa was even close to their favorite thing that they saw there. Oh, you didn't go to see the gargoyles. Well, you know what? That's okay, because I I sort of regret this, but I I didn't get to go to France, but I did get to go to Italy, and I didn't see the David. You know why? Because I did not want, it was a long line out in the hot sun, and I just did not feel like standing around while all these vendors were trying to sell me stuff. But now I kind of wish that I was a little more patient and went to see it. Though I will say the Boboli Gardens are pretty fantastic. So, and I will say that my mom, while she was there in, uh, it, she broke one of the cardinal rules at a French restaurant and she asked for the steak well done. The, uh, the waiter turned white as a ghost. He was like, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. And she said, well, then I'm going to have the fish. Uh, so let's let's take a little trip to Italy now, and uh, for this one we can do Volare, great song by Dean Martin. And feel free to sing along if you want, even if you're muted. If you if you per some people prefer to sing while muted, it's sort of the uh, the Zoom equivalent to singing in the shower. But oh, your niece was married in Italy. Oh my gosh, that's that's amazing. Definitely a a very good place for love. Sing to the tune of a star that I know of Where lovers can find peace of mind We can leave the confusion and all disillusion behind Just like birds of a feather Together are a rainbow entwined Volare Oh Cantare Oh The pinto di blu, felice di stare lassù. Hopefully, my Italian is passable. E volavo, volavo, felice più alto del sole ed ancora più su. Ma tra un mondo pian piano spariva lontano laggiù. Una musica dolce suonava soltanto per me. One more time, volare. Oh, uh, cantare, oh, 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 nel blu, dipinto di blu, felice di stare lassù, no wonder my happy heart sings, your love has given me wings. All right, I saw you singing along, Peggy. That, that was a fun one. And, uh, I just found Dean Martin to be just a, sometimes he's in the shadow a little bit of uh, Frank Sinatra, but he himself was a really interesting character. Uh, and Dean Martin wasn't his actual name. Does anyone know what his, his real name was? The first name was pretty similar, but it was actually Dino Paul, Dino Paul Crosetti. Yeah, so do doesn't really ring, roll off the tongue quite as nice, does it? Um, but he, because he, you know, didn't even, Italian was his first language, not English, um, which is why he said, you know, did so much for Ita like it Italian immigrants for singing these songs uh, in, in English and Italian, which at the time really wasn't done very often. Um, but everyone loved it anyway. Uh, as long as I had that English part, people were hooked. Uh, but he didn't even speak English until he was five years old. Uh, yeah, so pretty impressive. Uh, another thing about him was 
he had a somewhat unusual early profession before he started singing. Does it? Anyone want to take a guess? I'll, I'll give you some choices. Was he a painter? Uh, was he an athlete, like a, a track and field athlete? Or was he a boxer? Yeah, Brittany knows. Yeah, he was a box. You're right. Well, I guess you were probably going to say it's probably the one that's the most unusual. But yes, he was a boxer and he had a pretty good record. Um, but, you know, of course, when you're a boxer, sometimes even when you win, you come out with some black eyes and things like that. So it uh, wasn't so good for when he started to take up singing to have to deal with missing teeth and all of that. But he actually liked fighting so much that he once also got into his, a fight with his roommate. Like a, a real, uh, not just like a yelling fight, like a real fist fight. <laughs> and needless to say, that uh, after that, he uh, once he, well, so he changed his name um, twice. He started Dino Paul Crosetti, but then he became Dino Martino. That was his boxing name. But there was only one other problem. There was someone else, a uh, singer who had gotten popular, who went by the name Nino Martino. So he realized he had to change it just a little bit more. And uh, one last thing, you might remember who is, there is a, uh, a certain duo that was very famous. Who is his partner? Jerry Lewis. Yes, you got it, Sandra. Um, and they were, you know, a great tag team for so long. Dean played the straight man where, you know, Jerry was the wacky one, uh, served as a good foil for him. But sometime later, after their show business career, well, actually, it was because of the show business career that they started to not get along um, because Dean Martin at some point got a little tired of, you know, always having to play the, the cool straight man where Jerry got to be the crazy one and kind of took up more of the, the limelight. So he started to write himself into more and more of the show, pushing Jerry out. So they got into a bit of a fight, uh, which went not just onto the stage, but onto the plate because they both went into, after uh, their performing career, they both opened up restaurants on the Sunset Strip. Uh, one was Dino, I think it was Dino's Hut. And then Jerry Lewis, he, you would have thought the comedian would have thought of a very interesting name, but it was just Jerry's. Uh, and the fight went on for a few, quite a few years before uh, both res restaurants ran out of business. So <laughs> it's, you know, but, but later on, like much, much, much later, they did have like a reunion show and, you know, put, put all their, uh, their past besides them. So let's head back to the US now and uh, we'll go for the next one. Let's do some country roads, because it's a great time for a road trip. And uh, I can't say I've ever been to West Virginia. I think most people probably haven't. But it's, uh, it's always nice to think of just like that nice rural area, especially if you're living in the city and kind of, you know, you need a break. I think this year in particular. Almost heaven, West Virginia. Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah River. Life is old there, older than the trees, younger than the mountains, blowing like a breeze. Country roads take me home to the place where I belong. West Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home. Country roads, all my memories gather round her. Miner's lady, stranger to blue water. Dark and dusty, painted on the sky. Misty taste of moonshine, tear drop in my eye. Country roads, take me home to the place where I. Virginia, Mountain Mama, take me home, country roads. 
a shorter version of that song, but I always a fan of John Denver. So, all right, well, oh, a train went through West Virginia. Nice. Two days. Oh my goodness. I could not imagine traveling for two days. I think uh, people who, I mean, that's how it used to be though. And when my dad, he told me he went on a road trip with his family. I mean, you, you know, by car, it was like a really long time. Uh, that people nowadays don't have the same patience. I think uh, a trip more than five hours and I'm like, okay, I need a nap. But anyway, I uh, think that for now we'll kind of shake things up and we're going, oh, well, if you love trains, then that works for you. Sorry if I get distracted by the chat, but it's, it's just fun. Uh, so now let's do a little game. This is a variant of one of my favorite games, Scattergories. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to think, well, how about some famous duo? We were talking about Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin. So we're going to think of some famous duos. That's going to be one category. Uh, the next one is going to be, well, since it's so beautiful outside and all the birds are out there, let's think of uh, some different kinds of birds. And uh, how about songs that have the word love in the title? Harder than, there's a lot of songs, of, a lot of love songs, but it, it's a little trickier when you'd have to think of songs with love at, that are actually in the title. So I'm going to get this started and we'll see how many we can get. All right. Ready? And we're going to start with famous duos. That can be singers, actors. You can get as creative as you want with it. All right. Ready, and I'll give some hints if we're <laughs> ready, set, go. You can put, put the answers in the chat or you can unmute yourself and call them out. Our goal is to get as many as we can. Laurel and Hardy, okay. We're on the board. Jerry Seinfeld. Sonny and Cher. Oh, sorry. Um, no, what, what did Jerry you say? Jerry Seinfeld and Larry David. Oh yeah, of course. Sonny and Cher, all right, we're up to three. Um, well, we can, we can also include the one that I, I had mentioned. That's a freebie, Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Um, Captain and Tennille. Yeah, that's the one that was actually just on my mind. Yes, Captain and Tennille. How about this was the couple in Greece, Starsky and Hutch, yes. Anyone remember the name of the, the characters in Greece? Oh. Carpenter, Danny and Sandy, yes, George and Gracie. All right, Brittany, can you keep count for us? I think we're up to nine answers now. Make that 10, Laverne, okay, Laverne and Shirley. Uh, how about uh, from I Love Lucy? There's two answers there. There's the neighbors, George Burns and Gracie Allen. Lerner and Lowe, oh, I don't even know that one. Lucy and Desi. Lucy and Desi. And then how about the neighbors? Fred and Ethel. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're on a roll. Uh, there's, uh, I don't know if you know that there is some pop singers that were big. Allie and... This is in the past decade, so if you don't listen to the music now, <laughs> you can pass on that one. That was Ali and AJ. Okay. Uh, now let's switch over to... Oh, Cap yeah, I think we said Captain and Tennille. Mm -hmm. um, well, in cartoons, there's uh, what's like the, the classic cartoon especially if you're going to Disneyland or Disney World from the black and white. Okay, Mickey and Donald. I was going to say Mickey and Minnie, but Mickey and Donald works too. <laughs> All right. Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll, 
I'll throw in an answer from one of my favorite cartoons, Chip and Dale. Uh, Pinky and the Brain was one of my favorite cartoons as a kid. Fred and Wilma, of course. And, uh, oh, this one. <laughs> Patrick and SpongeBob. How about the, uh, the couple on the, uh, the Dean Martin show? Okay, we can skip that. Does anyone remember who played played the wife? Skipper and Gil Gilligan, that's a good one. I would not have thought of that. Uh, how about the uh, who's on first, what's on second routine? One of the oldest two-person comedy acts. Yeah, yeah. Laurel and Hardy? That wasn't Laurel and Hardy. Abbott and oh, Costello, Abbott and yes. Costello. Excellent. All right. Now let's see how many different kinds of birds we can think of. I don't know if there's any bird watchers here, but all right. Canary. Cardinal. Peacock. Ooh, good one. Turkey. Okay, this one, the air answers are flying in. <laughs> How about, okay. Excellent, Oriole. My sister actually moved here from Baltimore, so. Got a Nightingale. I'll say uh, Emu. Mm -hmm. Red, ooh, a red-winged blackbird. Someone knows their birds. Can't have Thanksgiving with them. Excellent. I'll say crane, swan, yes, great blue heron. One of my favorite named birds, a blue-footed booby. <laughs> Such a strange bird. A mall rat, I'd never heard of that one. See, I'm learning things too. All right, this is where we're gonna rack up those points really fast. Oh, a mallard, okay, <laughs> that makes more sense. A dodo, yes, and extinct birds count too, a wren. I'll throw in a penguin, seagull, ooh, the starlings. Can't, of course, you can't have uh, New York City without the pigeons. Bluebirds. Morning dove, great. And uh, I'll say ostrich. For some reason, I'm really thinking of all the Aust like Australian birds, e egret and African ones. Okay, pelican. Fantastic. All right, now we're going to jump to a harder one now that we've got them warmed up. Now songs with the word love in the title. Give you, love is all you need. Ooh, I love the way you love me. All right, I hope you're keeping up, Brittany. The, the count is coming in fast. When will I be loved? How about here's a hint for this one. This was, uh, I believe, Diana Ross and the Supremes. Oh, stop in the stop name in of the love. name of love. Yes, yes, love is all that I can give to you. Love potion number nine, love child. Great, great answers. Wow, love machine. Uh, this is one by the B-52s. <laughs> love hurts. Great one. Oh, love shack. Yeah. This one was in the, the movie, the, the Wedding Singer. It was originally a song by the Jay Giles Band. Any of you ever seen that movie? He sings this song and then the father of the bride punches him. Baby love. The one that I was thinking of from The Wedding Singer, that one is called Love Stinks. 
Great, great scene, by the way, that song. All right. Well, we're getting a lot of answers, and I think we have one minute left. So let's see how many, many more we can add on to the final count. I think we got, I love the way you love me. Love child, I think we got. Um, there was one, a song from the 80s. Um, I can't even remember who sings it now. I know Cell is in their name. Cell, something Cell. That one was called, a song called Tainted Love. Any others? Love Will Keep Us Together. Great. How about if you think some Beatles songs, we, we still have some Beatles songs that we didn't get that have the word love in the title. Love Me Do, yeah. There's another one. Your love keeps lifting me higher, great. This one has some yeah, yeah, yeahs in it. Oh yeah. What is that one? She, yeah, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and there is our timer. All right. How many, tell, how many answers do you think we got? We did not have a lot of time, but. That, 24? 24, all right. Let's, I have a feeling it's more than that. I will guess 47. And Brittany, tell us the answer. How many did we get? If you weren't keeping count, it's okay. I, I got a, a backup count, though the accuracy is debatable. What, Brittany, did you, did you have a count of the score? Sorry, I was muted. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, if I did my counting right, maybe like 68. Wow. wow. All right. You mean Look for all us. categories together? Yeah, for all the categories okay. together. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, we are on a roll. Our, our brains are feeling sharp going into the weekend. I like that. All right, so we were doing uh, a trip. We, we already went down to West Virginia for those country roads. Now why don't we go a little further south for Georgia On My Mind. This was, well, I just, this song just, it's so good. Ray Charles. Georgia. Georgia, a piece I find. Just an old sweet song keeps Georgia on my mind. Georgia, Georgia, just a song of you comes in sweet and clear as moonlight through the pines. Other arms reach out to me, other eyes smile tenderly, still in peaceful dreams I see the road that leads back to you, Georgia, Georgia, no peace I find, just an old sweet song. Georgia on my mind. All right, I saw in the chat. It seems like everybody is uh, having those neat weddings with the nieces. Oh, Savannah, yeah, that would be. I've heard it's really nice there. And uh, I think with Sandra, you were saying you're having a trip for your niece's wedding in Georgia. I don't know if you're muted, but you can feel free to answer in the chat because that's really cool. Um, yeah, I know that my brother was actually living in Atlanta for a little while. Oh, it was 10 years ago. Oh, but what, what were your favorite things that you saw there in, in uh, Georgia? See, that's interesting. Uh, Savannah has a huge St. Pat celebration. I would have never guessed that. Okay, you might I'm, not, I'm unmuting myself. Okay. Um, I took the Greyhound bus down to my niece's wedding, thinking, okay, I'm not going to sleep on the bus. It was 20 some hours. 
I thought, well, when I get there, I can go to sleep. When my, my sister and my niece picked me up at the bus station, well, they had a lot of errands to run to pick up stuff for the wedding, which was the next day. So oh, we no. went shopping, then we went back to the house and we were cooking up stuff because it was going to be a potluck kind of thing and we had to make up the favors. And so we were up late at night cooking and putting all the stuff together for the wedding. Then we were up early the next morning, went to the wedding hall to decorate everything, get all the food over there. I filmed the wedding. Then we had to clean up everywhere, went back to her house, went to sleep. Next morning, I got up, got back on the bus and headed back to Milwaukee. So oh my I gosh. didn't see very much. And I was exhausted. <laughs> I yeah, you must have had like a constant supply of coffee in order I, to keep that going. I don't drink coffee, but when I got back oh, to wow. Milwaukee, um, the Greyhound station is in the intermodal and a friend of mine, he runs the, the cafe there. And I was standing at the bus stop waiting for the bus to, so I could go home. And he looked at me and he says, you want home? I said, yes. And he grabbed my suitcase, threw it in the back of his van and drove me home. <laughs> that That is pretty wild. Well, thank you for sharing that, Sandra. Um, I I have to say that uh, when it comes to weddings, I know how things can get crazy because I'm not sure if I mentioned or if all of you know, but I am actually going to be getting married in just a month. So I just went with my fiance here to Milwaukee. She's, get, she's so happy to see my niece and nephew and now my new nephew who just got his name today. It's Jacob, uh, named after my grandfather, but it is... Uh, yeah, pretty crazy. And it's hard enough to plan one wedding, but her family actually lives in Israel and they couldn't come here. So we're having not one wedding, but two weddings <laughs> within it, only a month. One is at the beginning of the month and one is at the end. So a lot to celebrate and a lot of planning. So oh, thank you. Congratulations. Best wishes. Yeah, <laughs> I am very lucky. She is fantastic. Um, so Georgia, I didn't, haven't been there, but my parents were there, but there is one major company that is stationed there that uh, a lot is a big tourist attraction in Atlanta. Does anyone know? This is uh, Coca-Cola, yes. Perhaps one of the companies most responsible for, uh, I don't know, our poor diets, but there it's uh, pretty interesting. You can try, uh, not just like regular Coca-Cola flavors and other Coca-Cola products here. You can have like Coca-Cola is different in China, in Mexico, and you can try like every different country's different variants and they all taste really different from what I heard. So it's a pretty cool place to go. Of course, there's a lot more than that in Georgia. You can't go without the peaches, but oh, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, you can have that down there too. Um, I didn't know the Chick-fil-A headquarters are there, but it's pretty great. And uh, I know you were also mentioning, I didn't know that Savannah had a big St. Pat's celebration. There is another city that will be our next stop on the trip that perhaps has, has one of the biggest ones for St. Pat's. At least one of the, the most uh, notable in the news. Does anyone know what is that other Chicago? Yes, where they? Oh, but they don't have the green beer in Savannah. Well, in Chicago, they have the green beer and they also uh, have the green river. And it, it blows my mind just how much green food dye it takes to change to change it. And the fact that there is still, you know, that it, it changes back and you can still drink the water. Oh, and Milwaukee's Irish Fest is happening this year. Well, fantastic. Well, I, why don't we do an Irish song then? And uh, and let's see, could do go really old and I'm looking over a four leaf clover, but why don't we do an Irish lullaby? Hush now, don't you cry. Tura Lura Lura. Tura Lura Lai. Tura Lura Lura. That's an Irish lullaby. Over in Killarney, many years ago, my mother 
Mother sang this song to me in tones so sweet and low, just a simple little ditty in her good old Irish way. And I'd give the world to hear her sing that song to me today. To ra lu ra lu ra. Hush now, don't you cry. Tura lura lura, tura lura lai, tura lura lura. That's an Irish lullaby. Oh, I love that song, and uh, hopefully, it puts my. Uh, my little newest nephew to sleep. <laughs> um, but I also love, I, I thought I would get to Milwaukee by taking a trip to Chicago first because getting the flights was so ridiculous, but it didn't end up working. But I do love Chicago and it's nice that it's so close to Milwaukee that you really kind of get two cities for the, for the price of one. And this is actually Sinatra was, uh, even though he was, wasn't from Chicago, he sang about it being his town in this song, Chicago, that toddling town. Chicago, Chicago, that toddling town. Chicago, Chicago, I'll show you around. Bet your bottom dollar you'll lose the blues in Chicago. That town that Billy Sunday could not shut down. State Street, that great street, I just want to say, they do things they don't do on Broadway. You'll have the time, the time of your life. I saw a man, he danced with his wife in Chicago, Chicago, my hometown. I always thought that was just a funny song, like, oh, it's so it's such a surprise. You saw a man who danced with his wife. <laughs> I don't know who else they'd be dancing with, but that song mentions someone that some of you, because of uh, how old the original version of the song was, you might not know, but maybe some of you do. Who was Billy Sunday that they mentioned in that song? Was he a baseball player, a preacher, or a... So he was, yes, he was a preacher, but I also made that a trick question because before he was a preacher, he was a baseball player uh, for, I can't remember if it was, I think it was for the White Sox. Um, but then after his baseball career, he, he wasn't a great baseball player, but he was definitely notorious as a preacher for the, you know, the very like, fire and brimstone, yelling, uh, that style, you know, he kind of helped popularize. Uh, but one of the things that he also was known for was being very against drinking and dancing. And needless to say, uh, the people who wrote this song about Chicago did, uh, did not take a liking to that. Uh, Cause of course, Chicago was very big in the pro, uh, the, uh, in prohibition, they were known for all the bootleggers and all of that. So, they tried to get around his uh, trying to stoke up the prohibition movement. So that's why they put in that song, that line, the song that Billy Sunday could not shut down. However, I think Sinatra had changed it to the song that Marty May could not shut down. So uh, just another thing that's pretty interesting. Now, uh, I am very excited to, to hear that Broadway is going to be coming. Marty May, I think he was the mayor of Chicago at one point but I can't remember exactly when. Whether or not he, he also didn't want people dancing, who knows, but Sinatra <laughs> didn't care. He probably, Sinatra was uh, known for having a lot of, uh, even as good as his music was, he also kind of had his uh, connections with the, the mob and everything, which was pretty active in Chicago. Great documentary on it, by the way, I think on Netflix, if you uh, have the time to watch that. And of course, it's thanks to those connections that Sinatra really helped make Las Vegas part of what it is today. He, he put a lot of money into to 
making it a real tourist hotspot. So uh, now, of course, it's almost July 4th. So I figured that we would also, before we make our, or maybe right after we make our last stop on our trip to, uh, may as well go to California with some, I left my heart in San Francisco. But then I'll, I'll leave you hanging on this one that we'll do a, a number from Hamilton. First, let's do I left my heart in San Francisco because I just think it's real Tony Bennett. Uh, I just think he's an inspiration. Just the fact that he, you know, very recently was still singing and performing with Lady Gaga, which I don't know, like my mom being in her 60s loves to sing, but finds it harder. But to do it in your 90s, that's a whole nother level of dedication. And he said that singing is what keeps him young. I left my heart in San Francisco Down by the hill it calls to me Where little cable cars climb halfway to the stars The morning fog may clear the air I don't care, my heart waits there in San Francisco, down by the blue and windy sea. When I come home to you, San Francisco, your golden sun will shine for me. Yeah, has anyone, I, I think I remember seeing earlier in the chat that, um, did anybody here ever live in California or visit California? Because there's a lot of great things to see there too. Including one of the toughest things to get tickets for, um, which is on a little island. Yes, you visited, all right, I got to visit once too. Alcatraz, yeah, that is the, the toughest thing to get a ticket to. You have to do it months in advance. Uh, but it's really cool when you get to go, especially if you get to go at night when they open up the, uh, the mental hospital. Very creepy. I, I actually scared, gave my friend a jump scare while he was in there, and he, almost, his head almost hit the ceiling. I couldn't help it. Um, yeah, but it, you took a ride around the island. That's great. If you're uh, fans of chocolate, especially brownies, might go to this factory that is in uh, in San Francisco. It starts with a G. But yeah, the Ghirardelli, which is fantastic. And if you love the uh, giant trees, one of the uh, great uh, great nature reserves is there. Yeah, the getting to go to the redwood forest which I sadly didn't get to do on my trip to San Francisco and we'll need to go back for that. Uh, so we may, all right, we made it. We took a little trip to Europe and then we came all, all the way across for, uh, and now we'll bring it back to where we started in New York with this little song uh, from Hamilton. And, ooh, you worked in Yosemite. Oh my gosh, that is amazing. That, I, Need to go there too. That is what I'm, I'm gonna, when I take a road trip, yeah, I wanna do Yellowstone and Yosemite if possible, because the national parks are really just one of our nation's great treasures. Um, but this is a song from before we became America, a little, uh, a breakup song by the not so nice King of Britain, King of England. And this one's called You'll Be Back. Actually, yeah, we'll do this one. You'll say The price of my love's not a price that you're willing to pay You cry And then throw your tea in the sea as you see me go by Oh, I so sad Remember we made an arrangement when you went away Now you're making me mad Remember despite our estrangement I'm your man. You'll be back. Soon you'll see. Don't forget that you belong to me. You'll be back. 
time will tell. You'll remember that I served you well. Oceans rise, empires fall. We have seen each other through it all. And when push comes to shove, I will send a fully armed battalion to remind you of my love. Ya da 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 When I am gone So no, don't change the subject Cause you're my favorite subject My sweet submissive subject My loyal royal subject Forever and ever And ever and ever and ever You'll be back like before, we will fight the fight and win the war. For your love, for your praise, and I love you till my dying days. With you gone, I'll go mad. So don't throw away this thing we had. Cause when push comes to shove, I will kill your friends and family to remind you of my love. <laughs> it's a good thing we got rid of that guy, right? Anyway, I am so glad that I got to join you all. I hope you had a lot of fun and I want to uh, thank you so much, Mary and Brittany for hosting me. It's thanks been for, really fun. Yeah, thanks for being a part of this. It's been really fun. I think everybody enjoyed themselves. Fantastic. And I hope that you also all have a wonderful weekend and hopefully the sunny weather continues for us. You too. Enjoy visiting with your new nephew. I will. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye, everybody. Take care. Bye. Bye.